Hi everyone, Ollie here. Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be my rotation roundup for my general practice specialty rotation. I'm a final year medical student at the University of Warwick on the graduate entry program. So first things first, just for those either unfamiliar or outside the UK, what is general practice? What is this specialty that I've been doing most recently? Well, general practice, as the name might suggest, is a more generalist specialty and it's still a specialty in medicine it's really important to remember that like family medicine in the US although people don't typically think of general practitioners as specialists it's a recognized medical specialty and general practitioners are doctors that have completed specialty training in general practice and I'll, I'll talk about that more in a little bit but it's the branch of medicine that is more concerned with community level health so looking after people more in the regions in which they live with problems that don't require either acute admission to hospital or long-term management of chronic conditions things like heart disease diabetes as well as working out what's wrong with people when they first realize that they have a medical problem and they might need referring and then either the gp can deal with that problem and um, if they can manage it within the setting of the general then the gp can deal with that problem uh, in the setting of that practice because GPs often work out of practices or offices essentially with examination rooms. So for example if I've got a headache and I'm a little bit worried about it it's not going away I can go and see my GP and say you know doc my head hurts in this particular way uh, my vision feels a bit funny they can either try and work out what's going on with me in the community setting and give me a tablet or help me manage it in some other way in the community setting or they can refer me to a specialist in a local hospital or a tertiary centre if it's likely to need more complicated management. And so what these things mean for GPs in practice is that you will be dealing both with acute new presentations of a very wide range of conditions, some of which might be dangerous, some of which might not be, and obviously they've got to recognise uh, what needs urgently dealing with and what doesn't. And then they're also responsible for managing these longer term health problems that I described before, things like diabetes, high blood pressure, and cases where people have already been seen in secondary and tertiary care, but they've now left hospital and they still need looking after in the community. But this placement was slightly different for us too. So we spent five weeks in a community general practice. It was quite a small practice as well with only two or three doctors there, if that, um, usually two there each day. There was actually a lot more independent consulting so what i mean by this is that myself and my clinical partner were given our own consultation room with access to the computer system and the patient notes and so on we would have our own patient lists so those patients would come in you know they've got an appointment for 11 o'clock we would see them at 11 o'clock take a history do an examination and the really interesting part uh, particularly as things went on was they'd want us to consider, you know, maybe three most likely differential diagnoses. So if someone comes in with chest pain, do we think this is maybe acute coronary syndrome? Is it gastroesophageal reflux, a bit of heartburn, or perhaps something like a chest infection? You know, why does this person have chest pain? The thing that made it a really good placement was that particularly towards the latter half, they became very keen on us actually going through our thought processes and delivering a management plan to the patient and explaining what we were thinking with the patient before a doctor would come in and actually review the case. So essentially, you're committing to your plan and what you, what you think the main problem is before another doctor comes in and offers the, the correct you know, external opinion and says, it's this, this is what we're gonna do. So one of the cases that I saw, for example, was someone came in with uh, knee pain. So I'd take my history, thankfully it was a relatively simple case. I'd do my examination. I became fairly convinced that it was osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, just based on my examination findings, feeling crepitations in, in the knee as I moved it and uh, reduced range of movement and so on. And so then before going and consulting with the doctor, I would say to the patient, you know, based on everything you've told me um, and relevant risk factors and things, I think this is osteoarthritis. Assuming that that's correct and this is osteoarthritis, we're going to need to do this, this and this. You know, we want a knee x-ray. Um, we need to manage your pain, we can maybe get you some physiotherapy, and so on and so on. And actually committing to that thought process, essentially what it's going to be like when we're actually Foundation One doctors. And I've actually found that experience really useful in building up my clinical confidence, right? Because when it comes to our final exams and our final clinical cases, 
this is exactly what we're going to have to do you know examining taking a history and saying to our examiner i think that it could be this this or this i've decided based on my history that this is more likely than this and i would want to ask for this investigation these bloods and this imaging uh, to confirm or make less likely any of these diagnoses you have to really give a solid justification for everything that you're doing and the other element that's been really useful is not just this idea of independent consulting but also the fact that there is such a range of conditions right that could come through the door both adult and pediatric there has been elements of cardiology of musculoskeletal health of autoimmune problems dealing with problems in children where you might have to manage them differently things like urinary tract infections as well as the process of actually trying to solve these problems in the real world in the community setting and often just needing to reassure people of saying you know actually you're okay this will you know resolve give it a week give it two weeks give it a few weeks this will actually get better and building that rapport and sense of trust um, with the patient and this is something that i think applicants to medicine and preclinical students don't necessarily appreciate to be as true as it is which is that you really can have a positive experience on patient care and their medical experience and I say even as a student even though you're not medically qualified the things that you say and do and how you are with patients um, you know giving them time to react to bad news or being able to spend more time with them during your examinations and really trying to reassure them that can make a very big difference so don't be afraid to use that time very well and get to know your patients and just to talk a little bit more about gps themselves because something that i'm quite keen to cover with people particularly if you're not at medical school yet is how the training programs work and gp is a unique training pathway as with most specialties you will go through medical school you will do your two years of foundation training being an f1 doctor getting all your license and stuff together then you're an f2 doctor an independent practitioner then gp training uh, so you can go into it straight after your foundation training it's run through training and it lasts for three years in which i think it's six month rotations that you'll do in different specialties so you might do them in medicine in surgery in emergency medicine and of course in gp as well so gps during their training have actually rotated through a very wide range of healthcare settings i think they have to do gynae as well or often do in psychiatry things like that because they're going to be dealing with a huge range of problems and so in order to be able to deal with this huge range of problems they've actually probably seen them all or most of them in a hospital setting so they do understand what happens uh, when they refer on to secondary services and after those three years assuming that they've passed all their exams and things like that that's it they're a fully qualified GP and they can practice you know independently they can go and work in a GP practice um, they might work eventually up to becoming a partner in a practice because GPs um, are run almost like businesses essentially in terms of how their finances work and so if people want more of an income potentially they might want to partner in these businesses just as you might in something like a law firm um, for example but obviously we're just working in the health sector and GP from a careers perspective um, I think it has a few key advantages which um, I discussed a lot with the doctors and that's something that I would generally recommend when you're on your clinical placements and seeing different specialties don't be afraid to sit down with the consultants and the registrars and, and say you know what is your life actually like is your training what you hoped it would be why is your specialty worth doing what are the negative points be really honest and upfront about these things and so gp is one of the specialties where people can definitely have more of a work-life balance particularly if you are either locuming um, that is filling in shifts and other GP practices or to be fair at any level even if you're a partner they tend to have a bit more granular control over their working life there are no nights no on calls um, with GP as there often are in hospital medicine you never have to be a med reg or a surgical reg which is some of the most stressful jobs I gather from talking to my seniors um, you have a bit more control and a bit more flexibility over what you actually do as well as the fact that GPs can actually have special interests in particular things so if you like working with your hands for example if you like surgery you can actually do minor surgery 
as a GP. That might be removing skin lesions, removing lipomas, the little things that can be done in the community as sterile procedures. Or you could choose to have a special interest in women's health or dermatology or cardiology. And there are lots of actual courses and certifications that you can do to boost your skill set as a GP. And not forgetting that because GP gives you that flexibility, it's a lot easier to have a, a portfolio career to do research to do teaching because your time is much more your own you can kind of do with it more what you want so there are many many reasons to choose gp training do i think it's for me um even though i really love it and i think actually some of the best experiences that i've had at medical school have been in general practice because the learning is so good do i see it for myself no i think that i would rather be a specialist um, if not only for the reason that I think I would find the generalist presentation set quite challenging to deal with. If I'm a specialist in a hospital, I at least know what the rough area of the problem that comes through the door is going to be. If I'm a GP, it could be literally anything and someone could be acutely unwell um, or in serious danger. It could be ophthalmology, psychiatry. I think I would find it quite fatiguing, to be perfectly honest, and that's why I don't see it for myself at least early on um you know i want to do surgery as many of you know but actually more often than not in my placements where i was in general practice the gps that i was placed with were actually surgeons that had uh, either trained completely to consultant level or become senior registrars and then just decided that surgical training wasn't for them anymore you know one of them i think said to me you know i could earn more money and have more time with my family not being a surgeon and I could go and work in general practice I can still use my medical knowledge do some minor surgery to scratch that itch but actually other things are more important to me and that may well be something that happens to me in the future I don't know but I certainly wouldn't think badly of it as a change if it did so to wrap up I guess has my GP block been a great experience yes it absolutely has the practice we were at has been fantastic the doctors that were looking after us have all been incredibly helpful the team was really welcoming it felt like they wanted us there that they really wanted us to learn and they were very keen to say you know is if this isn't useful for you go and do something else your time is really your own if you want to see patients by yourself you can do that if you want to do phone calls which there are obviously a lot more of during covid you can do that if you want us to observe you doing cases we can do that too and it was a really good chance to tailor our learning. We had a really fantastic experience. So GP has been a great block, make the most of it. Very quickly, why has there not been a video now in two weeks? Isn't that disgusting? The time has just disappeared. Essentially, it's because the time has come for me to apply for my Foundation One jobs, and I've been trying to get my job application form and my white space questions and things for the Academic Foundation program together but that's very much a separate video that needs to be made. But I've just been trying to do last minute bits of research, last minute conference presentations, and just keep on top of my studying. And all of these things have had to come ahead of making videos. And I've also been very busy reviewing your personal statements as well, which was a fantastic time. So interview content to come, job application content to come, but in short, GP has been a great block. Really, really enjoyed it, had a great time. Excited to start OBS and Gynae. But take care guys and i'll see you next time so if you want to support the channel guys there are three ways you can do it the first is by leaving a comment a like and subscribing to the channel you can buy me a coffee using my ko-fi link which will help keep me awake during the editing process and then lastly you can use my referral link to save 10 percent off your first year of complete anatomy 2020 and i'll get a small kickback when you sign up for a year take care and i'll see you next time